a remorseless serial killer, who was likely to remain a threat to society for life. These were the words that were used to describe the former police sergeant, Nomia Rosemary Nlovu. <laughs> This is a footage that was captured by an undercover police officer who had hidden a recording device in the car that he, Rosemary Nglovu, and another recruited hitman were traveling in. The trio was heading to the town of Bushbikridge, where Nlovu was to show the two gentlemen where her sister's house is. Nlovu hired the two men to burn her sister, along with her five children, alive, in the house. <laughs> In her own words, Nglovu said the two hitmen should leave no witnesses behind. They even stopped at a local garage in Middleburg where she bought two liters of petrol and handed it over to the undercover police officers who were pretending to be hitmen. The petrol was meant to be used to ignite the flames that would wipe out her sister and her sister's five children. However, Blovu was arrested by police moments after she had pointed out her sister's house to the undercover police who were pretending to be hitmen. Luckily, her sister and all of her children were safe. Nomi Rosemary Nblovu, a former police officer, is currently serving six life sentences at the Middleburg Correctional Facility after being convicted in October 2021 on charges that included murder, attempted murder, defeating the ends of justice, and also fraud. She collected more than 2 million rands in insurance payouts after killing members of her own family between 2012 and 2018. A total of six people were murdered by Nglovu, including her boyfriend, Maurice Mabasso, who was also the father of her child, and had already escaped two assassination attempts on his life before. And also five of her own family members, including two of her nephews, her niece, her cousin, and also her other sister. Her motive for these murders was that she wanted to claim their life and funeral insurance payouts. Before her arrest, she had collected as much as two million rands. During her last statement in court, Glovu went on to say the following. I am not angry with anyone. I am crying from pain because those people who died were all my relatives. Glovu's first victim was a man named Medulla Witness Homu. He was Glovu's cousin. Witness was found beaten to death in the town of Liffensfontein. For his death, it is said that Glovu received a life insurance payout of over 150,000 rands. At this time, Nglovu was a constable at the Thumbissa police station in East Strand. Nglovu is alleged to have forced Witness's mother to add Witness to a funeral cover before his death. His mother would eventually agree. Months later, Witness Homu was found dead. He was killed on his way back from work. He had been hit with a blunt object over the head. He had also been stabbed over 80 times, which caused him to die instantly. Later that day, Nglovu would lead the search for his cousin in police stations in the area, ultimately leading his immediate family to his body, which had been found by the local police a few hours earlier. Nglovu had insured him for more than 150,000 rands, which she received from a funeral policy. It is said that Nglovu only contributed 200 rands towards his cousin's funeral.
Blovu's second murder was her very own sister, Audrey Simison Blovu. She was found dead in June 2013. Blovu was apparently the last person to have seen her alive on the day before her body was found. It is said that Blovu cashed out more than 800,000 rands in life and funeral insurance payouts for her sister's death. These funeral policies were all opened in Audrey's name only a few months before she died. The policies were opened fraudulently by Nglovu, with her sister knowing nothing about them. On the day before Audrey died, Nglovu had visited a room in the township of Thambissa. The sisters decided to share a meal together. Audrey would then leave her sister alone in her room, who was making tea for them, to go and buy some bread at the shops. It was then that Nglovu is said to have slipped a poisonous substance into her sister's tea. Audrey would return a few moments later, they ate, and Lovu left with the promise that she would return later on that day. Eight hours later, Lovu seemingly came back to find Audrey still alive. And then, it was at this point that she decided to strangle her to death, right there and then. When she was done with that, Lovu then locked the security gate behind her, and went home. The next day, she returned and alerted neighbors that she was unable to reach her sister by phone and was concerned, even crying and expressing fears that her sister may be dead. Audrey's boyfriend, who lived in the back of a house opposite hers, cut through her burglar bars and found Audrey dead in the house. Her body had started to decompose under the blanket. It was while in Audrey's room after the body was found, with police on the scene, that Nglovu allegedly knocked over two cups, picked them up and put them in a basin full of water outside the room, despite being warned by police not to do so. The state later on found out that these were the cups the sisters had used to drink tea the previous day. Not so long after Nglovu strangled her sister to death, she would pay a hitman to go and assassinate her very own mother, who stayed in the town of Bushbikridge. The hitman that was sent to murder her mother went on to turn state witness in court and said the following during his confession. I went into the home, but I saw the fragile old woman and could not carry out the hit. So I just left and took off with the down payment that Nglovu had given me for the job. If I wanted her dead, I would have left her in the house to die, and not rushed her to the hospital. This was the testimony from former police officer Nomia Rose Marion Blovu, about events surrounding the death of her niece, Ms. Motha. She was testifying in the Johannesburg High Court on Monday. Her niece died in June 2013, the same month that Blovu strangled her sister to death. Matha died after sustaining serious injuries while she was visiting Blovu at her home in the township of Clayville. There isn't much information on how Matha sustained her injuries. However, in an indictment that was released by the court, it is stated that Matha sustained injuries after being hit by a car in Kempton Park. When Blovu testified in court in September 2021, she went on to say the following about the mysterious death of her sister. I received a call from my brother saying that I have to rush to Thumbissa Hospital. When I arrived there, I found Matha seated on a wheelchair and already discharged. She never explained to me how she ended up in the hospital, nor how she got her injuries. I then took her back to her home in Clayville, where I took care of her for a day. Matha complained of severe pain the next evening, so I rushed her to the Arwap Hospital in Kempton Park, where she was declared dead, on arrival. When her niece died, it is alleged that Nglovu cashed in a quarter million rands from three different policies. She had opened these policies in Matha's name without her knowing. It is said that she only assisted the family with 600 rands, while she kept the rest. When Matha was treated at the Thumbissa hospital before her death, the doctors who were treating her said she had only received small injuries to her face. But, when Matha died, her injuries were more severe. A post-mortem later revealed that she had fractured ribs and her liver was damaged.
Then, two years would go by until Nlovu would once again go on a killing spree, and this time it was the father of her child. Maurice Mabasa was a U.S. Embassy employee. He was found dead in the town of Elephantsfontaine in October 2015. He had been stabbed over 50 times, and his body was dumped outside a residential property. At first, it was said that Maurice was killed in a robbery, but his wallet, which had over 300 rands, was found in his pocket. This dismissed any suspicion that he was murdered during a robbery. What's even more horrible is the fact that before Mabasa died, he had escaped death twice during his relationship with Nlover, with the third time being the last time. In the first attempt, he narrowly escaped being shot outside his home. Five minutes before that, Mabasa had received a call from Nlover, who was in the hospital with their infant daughter. She asked him to bring more diapers to the hospital. As Mabasa was preparing to drive out of the house, he came face to face with a masked hitman, who was standing outside the yard. Then, it was at this point that the masked assassin pointed the gun at Mabasa, pulled the trigger, but, the gun jammed. The hitman then fled after that, without firing a single shot. In the second attempt, Mabasa was asleep at home, when suddenly the main room, caught on fire. Bottles of petrol had allegedly been placed under his bed, causing the room to be consumed by flames. Nlovu was also inside the house at that time. This incident happened just weeks before Mabasa's death. At the time of Mabasa's death, he had an infant daughter with Nlovu, but, she later died in 2017, a year before Nlovu was arrested. During her appearance in court, Nlovu went on to say that, on the morning of the 14th of October 2015, Mabasa, who was a security guard at the US Embassy, had failed to arrive home from work, after working a night shift. Then, it was at this point that Nlovu, would rush to the Elephantsfontaine police station, where she reported him missing. While she was still there, a police officer would then tell her, that they had discovered the body of Mabasa, in the early morning. Mabasa's body was dumped in a forest with over 50 stab wounds. Police found money and cards in his pockets, which were used to identify him. When Mabasa died, 16 life and funeral insurance policies were opened in his name, and, all these documents were with Rosemary Nlovu. The first policy was opened in 2011, the year they met each other. The last policy was taken out on the 1st of June, 2015. Four months before Maurice Mabasa died. It is said, that Nlovu cashed in more than 800,000 rands in insurance claims. Before Mabasa died, he was not aware of the policies, that were taken on him. This was because, Nlovu would hire random people, to pretend to be Mabasa, and get them to open the policy on his behalf. The final two victims of Nlovu were her two nephews. One was the son of her sister, whom she strangled to death three years prior. Brilliant Mashego, Nlovu's nephew, died in January 2018. He was last seen with Nlovu, on the 22nd of January, in Bushbikrich, in Pumalanga. His body was found on the 24th of January, two days after he was seen with Nlovu. It was later discovered that, he died from head injuries. Nlovu also testified in court that, she had taken four different policies for her nephews. Her other nephew, was found dead in the town of Lefenfontaine with over 80 stab wounds. Nlovu was the last person to see him, because she had dropped him off at a local garage, a few hours before he died. It is not known how much money Nlovu received from these funeral policies. However, she has received over 1 million rands, for the six murders. Within just six years, the former policeman would be responsible for taking the lives of six of his family members. However in April 2018, Nlovu was arrested after a police sting operation in which, she was recorded telling a hitman to kill Joyce, and her five children, by burning them alive, inside their house. Joyce was her other sister. The hitman was an undercover cop, who had been investigating Nlovu, for over a year. For the murder of her six relatives, Nlovu was handed six life terms behind bars, and also an additional 100 years, for defrauding insurance companies, conspiring to kill Joyce and her children, and also for adamping to kill her elderly mother.